We're in the studio of Robert Brasick, who joined Bowery Gallery in fall of 2019. We're going to have a brief conversation about his work. Bob, let me ask you, could you briefly describe your work? Basically, the sculptures that I've been doing in the last seven or eight years are open form sculptures that use the elements, the natural, naturally formed elements of trees, the, the upper branches of trees, uh, uh, to uh, uh, recombined and worked uh, by hand by me. So they're very much a dialogue with nature. So you consider your work uh, uh environmental, that, it, that, that you're reusing materials that already exist out in nature and... and well, yes, in a certain sense, although it's not the main issue, it's, it's unavoidable that uh, I would maintain that my sculpture has about as small a carbon footprint as possible. They literally exist as trees, and when I cut the limbs off of the trees in pruning, maintaining trees, I use them in my work. So there's there's virtually, they, they go from being a living tree to being transformed into sculpture in one step. Or So how, how do you arrive at your current work? Uh, it's been a long, long process. Uh, I've had a career as a figure modeler for many years and cast works in bronze. Um, and through that whole period, having grown up in New England with so many trees around me, uh, I was always impressed with the structure and the nature of trees and their forms and what they mean in our lives. And I've always wanted to do something. So uh, at one point I, I, was, I was in a place where I had the opportunity to consider the problem and there were lots of trees around. And I realized uh, that if I cut a branch of a tree in a certain way, I could get an element it was very interesting and very adaptable and could work in a dialogue with other pieces uh, of wood and that I could make sculpture out of them. How do you see your sculpture in the current environment of art and in the world in general? I want my sculpture to be emphatically three-dimensional. I believe we live in a time where so much material, so much information comes to us two-dimensionally in books and in televisions, movie screens and of course computer screens that um, I wanted, I want sculpture. I enjoy three-dimensionality. I, 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 it's, it, I live and breathe three-dimensionality as I move through the world, and I wanted to make sculptures that brought a true three-dimensionality into people's lives. So my sculptures are relatively small in scale, uh, and they're meant to be lived with, uh, not put on a pedestal, and walked around, but literally put on desks and uh, tables in, in people's houses and for them to move around them and, and have that three-dimensional uh, experience, uh, a sculpture that's complex and leads you around uh, to uh, read it in three dimensions. Can you talk a little bit about your process? How do you conceive of a piece? How do you make the work? How do you actually physically put it together? Well, in a very real sense, as I said earlier, it's a dialogue with nature. So I harvest these branches and I dry them and I prepare many. I have piles of them. And uh, every once in a while I'll find a piece, a piece of wood that strikes me, and I feel a, a sense of how it can be added to and worked with. It's things like, like this. This is one that has the bark stripped off, but you can see it has, you know, it delivers something. It's not a piece of clay or a bar of steel uh, simply rolled out or a sheet of steel, which, which, has, which gives you something, but this is an organic form that nature has made, and it, it says something, and certain aspects of it speak to me, not, let's say, th this particular piece in this particular way, and I, by adding to it, I can begin to comment, and it and all the times I'm trying to keep it moving and alive, very loose and open. So let's take a look at something that you're working on right at, right now, and uh, maybe you can show us what you mean. Well, this is a good example of a piece that I'm working on. Uh, what you see if uh -huh. the lighter pieces are bits of masking tape. Uh, and what it allows me to do is work very freely and loosely. 
Um, I can tack things up. It's not as heavy as iron. It, it doesn't have the problems of supporting itself the way iron does it, where, uh, where welding, <laughs> welded sculpture does. And one, once, this is not a finished piece, but let's say it were, at this point, I would begin to really establish these technically uh, correct joints. This piece over here is finished, and it would give you an idea of what a piece, what something like this would look like. Uh, so let's, let's, let me just pull back here so I can see the whole thing. Uh, why don't you remove that long branch because it's... So this is a piece that's finished. You can see that it maintains characteristics of the, the pieces of wood that I, that I found. But in recombining them, they develop into a dialogue. Uh, they answer each other in curves and linear ways. And uh, as you, if you look close, you'll see that a lot of these joints are pinned, metal pins. Or I can sometimes, you can see very clear. I don't know how clearly at this scale, that's a, a metal pin that passes through and is anchored on this side. It makes a rather strong joint. Uh, but it can be as simple as just simply drilling a hole in one piece and, and inserting the other piece into it. I often say that the, the, the woodworking that I do here is really no more complicated than making a chair. Let's take a look at your uh, source materials, just so people get an idea of how much material uh, you need to actually start thinking about a piece. And I gather you replenish these at times. Nature is bountiful. Actually, it's probably one of the least expensive sculpture materials on the planet. People are literally willing, want you to get rid of branches that come down on their property. And I, I, I get them from neighbors. A limb will come down in a windstorm. Uh, Robert Brasick will be participating in Bowery Gallery's online exhibit titled New Gallery Artists coming up in June 2020. Look out for it on Bowery's website, www.bowerygallery.org. Thanks, Bob. Goodbye, thank you.